Hey guys, welcome back to Gingerbread and Quantics with AMG. Today we're going to be talking about how to propagate and to use a micro worm culture, banana worm culture, or Walter worm culture. So if you guys are interested in that type of information, make sure you guys stay tuned. And if you guys like the information you guys got here, make sure to hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you guys didn't like the video, that's okay. Just make sure you hit the dislike button twice and we'll get into the video. Walter worms banana worms and micro worms are all very similar worms and are kept in the same manner. There are a couple of different size variations between them and if you want to really get into the minutia of it you can go online and look at some of the other articles out there and what people recommend. I'm using Walter worms because I got them for free from one of my local club members so that's why I'm using what I have. In terms of getting it started what you'll need is some sort of container. I'd recommend a container that has a decent amount of height towards it not something that is shallow like this. I'll get into that a little bit later. You also want to have a deep enough amount of substrate or whatever you're using for your worms, be that potatoes, oatmeal, bread, whatever you're using. Make sure you have a deep enough layer. And then finally, you're going to want to make sure that you can aerate it, which is pretty easy to do. Um, and This requires a knife or something to cut into it. So let's get into it. The first thing is you need is a container. This is actually a leftover KFC container and has worked wonderfully for me. So you don't have to necessarily go out and buy a specific container for this. You can just collect containers as you use them around your house uh, instead of having to go out and buy one. So this is a KFC one and I have I am using oatmeal because this is the, what I currently have. I would prefer to use mashed potatoes, not because of the smell, but I feel like mashed potatoes uh, make a much finer consistency in the actual paste, if you want to call it, as you're laying it down into the container. It isn't as large of chunks as, say, the oatmeal. The oatmeal, you might get pick up a chunk by accident and you have a huge chunk of oatmeal in there, whereas with mashed potatoes, it's usually a, a little bit of slurry of potatoes and it's very fine, so it's not a, a big deal. So I would, disregarding the smell of the actual cultures, I haven't noticed any difference between them, just in terms of working with them and handling them and whatnot. I prefer instant mashed potatoes but I have any on hand. Hence, insta oatmeal. So the first thing you want to do is get your substrate prepared. I am using probably about a half inch to three quarters of an inch of oatmeal in here and I have found that the cultures over time slowly start to liquefy as they get older going on to the three, four, five weeks and at that point, if you don't have enough media in there, uh, you're going to start running into a culture that's crashing a lot quicker, in my opinion and experience, than with something with a deeper bed of media or substrate to begin with. So that's why I'm recommending a little bit thicker substrate, very thick, in comparison to some of the other ones that I have used. Second is that in terms of having a taller container, you're not going to run into issues that I have using these smaller containers. So the smaller containers, as you can see, there are a lot of mold colonies and bacterial colonies and fungal colonies growing on here, which I don't want. And that is because of all of the moisture that is trapped inside this container. And as the worms move up, they're going to leave moisture and produce moisture around them. And I've noticed that as the worms have moved up in these cultures and I haven't harvested them enough, the colonies start to form. and then I don't really want to necessarily feed from those because I don't know what type of bacteria or what type of microorganisms are and I don't want to get them into my fry tanks. So make sure you have something tall like this in comparison to this or even taller like this or even on the extreme I'm going to be using this today because I have it and I want to see actually how high the, the worms will actually go in the container. So choose something with height. Um, surface area is kind of irrelevant. I'd rather have something that is taller and not as wide. Um, so yeah, that, that's the first thing. Second thing is that these worms can be gut loaded like uh, you would gut load a ghost shrimp for feeding uh, something in the saltwater aquarium or gut loading other things to feed to other fishes. I'll include some research papers that I found on this just so you guys, if you guys are interested, you guys can look into it and see what they're talking about. But I feel like this is a very good first food to feed fish and if you can gut load them with minerals and vitamins and nutrients that they normally wouldn't be able to get, it's even better for the fish. So 
I don't have any spirulina powder currently on hand, and that's what I would have probably have used today. I'm going to be sprinkling in a little bit of flake food, so that way I can at least get some of the nutrients and minerals that the fish would need into it, and the worms would then eat it, and then the when the fish eat them, they'll get all the nutrients that were in the fish food. So I'd probably I'd rather go with the spirulina powder, so I can actually mix it and sprinkle it on top. But since I don't have that, I'm making do with what I have. So in terms of actually doing the culture, if you guys have made it this far and listen to me babble, uh, you're actually going to see how to make it. It's pretty simple. So I have my new culture. I have my old culture that's going bad. And all I'm going to do is take a spoon of the media. And there are tons and tons and tons of worms on it. I'm just going to go around and just sort of drizzle it around and we'll spread it around and in a couple of days this will be booming already and I'll be able to start feeding my fry with it. So yeah that's that's really all it is and from here all I'm going to do is take the lid that I have and I'm going to make a tiny little hole in the top part of the lid so that the uh, worms can get some fresh air and I'm going to make sure that I put in some sort of cloth or polyfill or cotton or something in the nature so that way uh, bugs or other animals cannot get inside to the container but that air can still freely pass through it to make sure there's plenty of oxygen in there for the worms. So with that, the culture is done, and I can just go ahead and uh, set this onto my little fish area, and it's all good. I'm gonna fill up the rest of these, and I'll come back to you guys in just a little bit. And with that, we're done. Um, this and this are more realistic containers to be using. This one is, I want to see how far the worms will actually climb up it, so that's why I'm using this old pickle jar for that instance. And to feed these guys to your fish is real, really, really easy. There's a couple different ways you can do it depending on how much you want to be involved with it. I just take my finger, rub it, rub it around the interior of the container, and then just stick it in the take, swirl it, and all the worms will fall off. You can use a toothpick or the end of a pipette or a uh, set of Q-tip toothpick, um, something that will just pick it up and that you'll be able to then transport it into your tank. So just a quick recap of everything that's happened in this video. Was, I talked about a lot and there's a lot of information in here. Culturing these is relatively easily. You probably want to switch these out every four to five weeks or starting a new culture, so in case yours crashes, you have a backup. It's always good to give one to a friend so that way you can come knocking on the door in case you accidentally do crash yours. I think potatoes are superior to oatmeal. Uh, if you guys disagree with that, let me know in the comments below. You can also gut load your worms with either fish food or um, spirulina powder or other things of that nature that you can actually just add on top of the chosen substrate that you want to use. Setting them up is pretty easy. Um, and then just feeding them is also relatively easy. So that's how I do that. So I think it, they're great fry food to have. I love feeding them to my Celeste Pearl Danio fry and adults. Um, it's just a great thing to have around in your repertoire of foods to feed your fish. Um, yeah, before we go, I have a quick question for you guys. Actually, two quick questions. One, do you guys think I'm wearing pants right now? Is that something that I've come to wonder whenever I'm seeing people on video and they have a nice shirt on it's like are they really wearing pants so let me know in the comments below if you guys think that I am or am not and I'll probably show a picture or a video on Monday or Tuesday after this is released showing you guys whether or not you are right or wrong you guys check out my Instagram same name as my YouTube channel it's also linked on the page so gingerbread aquatics go ahead and follow it uh, the second thing, if you guys enjoyed this video, like that video, and I'll see you on the next one. Also, subscribing also doesn't hurt, so maybe you just tap that button, just tap it, just, just one time, just tap it once, and you'll know whenever I uh, make some videos. Alright, see you guys in the next one, God bless.